First of all, let's just agree on this. What do great managers do? What's their role? Well, they all described it differently, but if almost to say, what was the thing the great managers said they did? They did this. They turned talent into performance. They might have been a leader over here or an individual superstar over here, but in terms of the manager aspect of their responsibilities, they all did this. No big surprise there. Let's put some more detail to that. These are the four basic activities of what a manager does. All of you, many of you at least, probably are in a managerial role, so you know this. How do you select people, set expectations, how do you motivate them, and how do you develop them? If you look at that, the first thought that might strike you is, oh, well done, Gallup, you've just discovered human resources. Um, yeah, initially, it doesn't look very good, does it? It doesn't look very dramatic. But peel the onion a little bit on each one of those four activities, and you can see that all of them are a little bit more complicated than they appear. If you want to know how to select people, you need to be able to answer this question. How much of someone can you change? How much of someone can you change? What's the difference between skills and knowledge and talents and attitudes and habits and traits and drive? Which of those can you change in someone and which have to be hired in? If you can't answer that question, you can't select people. Setting expectations, that's more than just goal setting, isn't it? If you're going to be able to do that well, you need to know on which part of the jobs am I going to insist upon conformity and where will I let people use their own judgment? If you don't know how to answer that question, you're going to lurch haphazardly between too many rules and too much chaos. Motivating. As a manager, you've only got one thing to invest, your time. So where should you spend it? Should you spend most of your time working with your strugglers or your superstars? No matter who you're spending your time with, should you spend more time fixing their weaknesses or building on their strengths? Can you ever give someone too much praise? How much praise is too much praise? You can't answer those questions. You don't know how to motivate somebody. Developing. Yeah, sooner or later, everyone gets asked this question as a manager. An employee comes up and says, where do I go from here? How do you help me grow? What's the right answer to that question? Do you say, hey, go talk to HR. It's not my job. Do you say, take this training class and I'll get you promoted? What's the right answer to a front desk clerk or a housekeeper saying, how can you help me grow? Growth in the workplace is Marcus Buckingham's specialty. First, break all the rules. His book of insights into what the world's greatest managers do differently is based on a Gallup study of more than 80,000 managers in 400 countries. One of the best-selling business books of all time, it focuses on how to find, harness the talent of, and keep the best employees. If you were going to ask me what one thing did you discover the great managers all shared, what is the one insight the great managers all seem to share, whether they worked in Kobe in Japan or whether they worked in Edinburgh or Mobile, Alabama, what one thing did they share? It would be this. People don't change that much. People don't change that much. So therefore, as a manager, don't try and put in what was left out. Try and draw out what was left in. That's hard enough. That's the mantra that all great managers seem to share. Look, people don't change that much. Don't try and put in what was left out. Try and draw out what was left in. That's hard enough. That's a revolutionary insight. If you're not careful, you find yourself telling people that they should ignore people's weaknesses or that all training is a waste of time, neither of which, as you know, is true. But if you take that one insight and you apply it to those four activities, these four keys, if you like, this is what you see. They would select for talent because talent's what was left in. They would set expectations by defining the right outcomes. They would motivate people by helping each person to focus on their strengths, whatever they may be. And when somebody says, where do I go from here, the challenge is to help them find the right fit. These, in our terminology, would be the four basic keys of what it takes to be a great manager. Every manager is different. But all the great ones we studied seem to 